Okay, we left off in the middle here in the Orchis Yosha where he is describing the tremendous busha, the tremendous embarrassment and shame that there is for a person who doesn't behave properly in shul. So I see that you all came back for a little bit more of the beating that he has to say over here. And he writes the following idea. And he says, he says, Hu busha oilomis she'en l'shayer the embarrassment that a person is going to have for disregarding the proper conduct in shul, whether, as we mentioned yesterday, whether it means that he's talking in the middle of davening, whether he's walking around, that he's not really paying such close attention, he's uh, not in it, he's not answering amen properly, all the different things that a person could do. So the embarrassment is something that is eternal, that is ain't the shire, you can't imagine how deep that embarrassment is going to be. Like it says in the Pasuk, So the Navi writes, the Navi, it's a yo-yo, the Navi yo writes that the Jewish people should never be embarrassed. We should never be ashamed. We should never be shamed. The greatest blessing that the Jewish people could receive is that we are, we are never more shamed in this world. So that's the biggest bracha. The biggest bracha is not to be ashamed, which we can understand then that the biggest klala, the biggest curse, the, the flip side of that is the busha that a person will, will, will end up getting in this world and unfortunately in the world to come. When you know he explains what's the pshat. In this world, when a person's embarrassment is known to the world. Habushi The embarrassment is very great. There are actually people that they get so embarrassed sometimes publicly that they don't even know how to deal with the embarrassment and the shame that they receive. They can actually come, they actually might even kill themselves as a result of that. We witnessed that this year. There was a man in the world, his name was Chaim Walder. He was known as the biggest expert in the world of Chinuch Abanim. He got caught doing terrible things. He, and he, in a short amount of time, he ended up killing himself in the front of the entire world. The, the abusha, the embarrassment that a person will go through in this world is so great, they could actually kill themselves. Ad, um, fine, Kamosh Yikosav, fine, like it says. Then he writes, um, But after a person gets over the initial shame and embarrassment, you read this lot. Little by little, the shame, the embarrassment, you feel bad about yourself, it begins to disappear. And everybody else, they start forgetting about it also. The guy uh, he's, he's, uh, he's gets caught, what do you, whatever, having illicit relations, and everybody knows about it, and then slowly but surely, you know what, everything, everybody forgets about everything. But in the future... When a person will leave this world, it's not possible that things will be forgotten. The same way the person feels embarrassment on the first day of that shame, in the world to come, where it's a world of netzach, a world of eternity, he'll feel that shame constantly. The same exact level of embarrassment that he had. Vizel Loshan Rabbeinu Yonah, like Rabbeinu Yonah writes in Pirkei Avais, when the nefesh, when the soul will be embarrassed after it separates itself from the body, the busha, the shame that a person will have in that world, when it's only a world of nefesh and neshama, of spirituality, will be much greater than anything that a person experienced in this world. You think to yourself, the greatest busha that you ever went through in this world, the greatest shame, I'm sure that everybody has had some kind of level of embarrassment in this world. Whatever the worst embarrassment is, can't compare to what's going on in the world to come. Because in this world, your body makes you forget about the real internal embarrassment that you have. Person does something embarrassing, they get caught red-handed, everybody's talking about it, goes on for a year, two years, people even schmooze about it for two years, and then the next thing you know, Yishkach, Hadover, Legamri, everybody forgot about it. Yes? What if you did tshuva? Can, if a person did tshuva, that's, that's the best. person did tshuva, they started 
behaving nicely in shul and they didn't talk anymore and they were davening the kavan and they were coming on time and they were leaving on time, sure, then he doesn't have to worry. The bush is it's gone. Of course, very good. Um, the way that it works, as time goes on, what do they say? Time heals all wounds. Time heal, why does he, so he's saying over time also heals all of you feeling embarrassed for yourself. As time goes on, you forget about it. Everybody else forgot about it. Everybody doesn't even talk about it anymore. And therefore, you're like a regular guy. Once again, everything is good. However, when the nefesh is all by itself and there's no body anymore, no goof, there's nobody around you, there's no world around you to help you forget about things, the nefesh never forgets what it did in this world nor the shame that it has. There's no a nature of the physical world about it. The nesham is pure and clear, has no shaykh, has no connection at all to the physical world. And therefore, when you're standing in front of Hashem, and you are embarrassed in front of the king of the entire universe, Forever and ever and ever, you will stand in that embarrassment, like it was at the time Shai Salamed is the fun of that you were standing in front of HaKadosh Baruch the first time that you did this thing. That way, you will end up being embarrassed forever, he writes. V'zehu Shalmer V'zalei Chazal say, Oy la la busha, woe to that embarrassment. Oy la la isa klima, woe to that shame. Ad kan l'shayna, those are the words of Chazal. So, Chaim, so this, that's the words of Rebbein Yoyna, and this is the words of Chazal, and this is the way that Rav Chaim Kanievsky is saying over here, to impress upon us this fact that when we're standing in a Beis HaKnesses, and we came here to Davin, we have to remind ourselves that the Shechina is taka here, HaKadosh Baruch is listening to all of our words, all of our tefillahs. It's the place where he's watching the closest. Maybe, you know what, maybe we could say when you're out there somewhere on the 101 in the middle of traffic and somebody cuts you off and you end up yelling something that you should not have yelled at the person in front of you, okay, maybe you're not under the nose of HaKadosh Baruch over there. Not saying that we should do such a thing, but maybe it's not so bad. Maybe when you're out there in the office and the, it's getting stressed out and the boss is coming down on you and you erupt in a moment of cast of anger, okay, so maybe, you know what, maybe you're not under the nose of the Rebbe Hashem, it's a little bit different. But here in Ashur, we're, we're under the nose of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is watching and listening and he's aware of every single thing that we do. So when you're in the presence of the king, you have to behave commence it with being in the presence of the king. And therefore it has all of these details that we spoke about until this point. Ule hepach, and therefore it says, Rechaim Kanevsky, the opposite is also true. Hazahir bezeh, somebody that is very careful about all these things that we have discussed. Mare kvoit shemaim, you show tremendous respect to shemaim, to the heavens, to Hashem. Ubevadai tfilosa miskabeles, certainly your prayers are going to be accepted and you create a great Kiddush Hashem in this world. So we are given a charge over here by Yechaim Kanievsky to learn and to master these things that he has said, because if we do that, it changes our whole yachas, our whole connection to the Beis HaKnesses, to our tefillahs, to the tzibor as one, and therefore our tefillahs will be accepted on high, and whatever it is that you're asking for, our Kaddish Baruch Hu will answer Be'ez Hashem, and in that zechus, like like we know that the Beis Haknesses is the mikdash ma'at that is left in this world. This is the this is like a a miniature Beis Hamikdash. If we treat the Beis Haknesses in the right way, and we show Kodesh Baruch how meaningful it is to be in such a place where the Shechina is, then in that zechus, in Yitz Hashem, He'll bring us to the ultimate Beis Hamikdash with the binyan by Shlishi Bimhei Ravi Amenu.